Good morning. Welcome to the worship service of Sunday here at Central United Methodist Church. You are our honored guests, and we're glad that you're worshiping with us. If you are over 70, you need to go to the DHEC website, D-H-E-C, and sign up, be registered to get your vaccine. We will have a charge conference on February the 8th at 6 p.m. It will be via Zoom. I've made a rather lengthy statement about the violence at the Capitol building. It's on the first page of the newsletter. Please read that. Please avail yourself to the upper room Sunday school class that meets at 9.30 every Sunday. And you can get there by going to the newsletter. The upper room also on, excuse me, also on Tuesday, we have a Bible study and uh, look for that on Zoom. Look also for, on our uh, webpage for the music, Wednesday music program. Let's worship together. Let us pray. You are the rock of our salvation, O God, the source of our strength. You are the fountainhead from which flowing, flow living waters. When our soul thirsts after righteousness, your justice sustains us. In need of encouragement, we behold your power and glory. We lift our hands. With our lips, we praise you. We raise our voices in the company of believers and call on your name. Fill us now with your Holy Spirit and nourish us by your presence. Amen.
Our Old Testament lesson comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Go lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak for your servant is listening. This morning, our joys and concerns, uh, you have noticed me limping for the last year or two. Well, I'm not limping anymore. I finally had some successful uh, work on my right knee. I also had a test for Parkinson's disease that came back negative, so that's a joy for me. David Harrelson is getting better and is at a physical rehab center. Pat Hemer, Julie Ayer's mother, passed away. We pray for that whole family. Carol Williams' brother passed away this week. Also as a concern, we pray for all those who have had, who do have, or are working to treat and overcome COVID. Let's pray together silently. O oh God, we remember that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Help us to find in Jesus the way that leads from earth to heaven, the way that leads from time to eternity, the way that leads from things that are visible to bigger things that are invisible. Help us to find in Jesus the truth about ourselves so that we may see both what we are and what we are meant to be. The truth about life, that we may know that the way to gain life is to spend life. The truth about you, so that we may know that in Jesus, we see exactly who you are. Help us as we study Jesus to find the life that is real, a life on earth that is a foretaste of life in heaven, a life that actually is your life and that cannot be extinguished. Grant that we may so walk after the way of Jesus and the apostles that with them we will leave, go into life eternal. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now a reading from Second Timothy chapter 4. 
in the presence of God and of Jesus, Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Some years ago, there was a commercial, and it didn't run on TV long because I think it was too truthful. The truth hit too, came too close. It was, you can imagine it was set in a boardroom of a large company, and there were about eight executives in that company in their suits and ties, so forth, but the executives were all chimpanzees. And as they were in this big boardroom, they had music playing and they were dancing, smoking big cigars, drinking liquor. They were having a big party. And then we see why on the sales reports, there was a graph that looked like this. 
upward, upward, upward. And so they were celebrating. Well, an accountant or some type of math person came in and looked at it, and he took this graph and turned it this way and said, this is the way the graph goes. Not upward, but downward. And the chimps stopped partying. They turned the music off. They got rid of their cigars. They got rid of the drinks. And they just sat there, not knowing what to do. Well, the math monkey had already left. And one of them, after a moment of silence, got up. put the graph back the way it was to begin with. They immediately hit the music, start partying again, based on a false graph. This to me is a parable of our time. Let's pray together. From the cowardice that dares not face new truth, from the laziness that has contended with half-truth, from the arrogance that thinks it knows all truth. Good Lord, deliver us. Amen. You heard in our Old Testament lesson the phrase, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. And here we must stop and note that the word of the Lord as used here is not the Bible. Most of the Old Testament had not been written when this happened. What they were talking about as word of the Lord is that given directly by God to a prophet. And almost all the books of the prophets, the minor prophets, the major prophets, have within the first chapter or two a story of the prophet's call. Isaiah, Amos, Hosea. And it will give the time when a certain person was a king, and then it will say, the word of the Lord came to Hosea. The word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Now this word generally centered around three themes. One, social justice for the marginalized. They, prophet, the prophets call this the widows and children. They emphasized monotheism. There was only one God, the creator of heaven and earth, and that was Jehovah. And the third major point was dependence on God rather than dependence on armies and alliances. This story is, takes place during the high priesthood of Eli. It says in Eli's day, the word of the Lord was not heard. Perhaps it's set in the days of King Saul who had his own problems. But the priest, so we don't really know if this happens at, in tabernacle or in temple, but it doesn't matter. Eli was getting old and he had two sons and they were priests there at the tabernacle and they were rascals. They skimmed more than was their portion of all the meat sacrifices, cheated people out of money, even threatened violence against people who were vocal about these problems, they were sloppy, careless in leading worship. Samuel, the other main player in this story, is a boy. And I hope you remember the story of Hannah, his mother, who prayed for a child and told God if God would give her a child, she would give him over to leading worship in the temple. She would give him to, to Eli. Well, she bore a son named Samuel, and she took him some miniature priest's clothes that she had sewn and took him to Eli, who would raise him up as his apprentice. And so little Samuel was there living in some type of, who knows, parsonage, barracks, a place there by the temple where full-time priests 
lived. And so Samuel becomes a priest and a prophet, two roles that are usually in the Old Testament at odds with each other. God calls Samuel in the night. And now the boy is becoming a prophet while he is an apprentice. And immediately after our story, God gives the word to Samuel and he has to deliver it to Eli. And the word was that his two brothers, or rather his two sons would be uh, judged guilty and punished. And that his, the long line of priests from which they came, their family would lose their position. So the word of the Lord was rare those day, in those days. And we want to a answer the question for just a moment, well, why was it rare those days? I don't think that means that the Lord had stopped trying to speak to prophets. But I think it may well have been that nobody wanted to tell this bad news and nobody wanted to hear it. It's natural because the word of the Lord generally comes with big responsibilities. It is almost always given to a prophet and it is about transformation or bad things will happen. The Apostle Paul in our New Testament lesson had recognized that and he said that there will be times when God's word is out of season, as the King James Version said. He said there will be times when people have itching ears. That means times when people will only listen to what they want to hear. In 1945, most Christians in the United States were mainline Protestants. Our churches were full of people. The clergy were empowered and by the 1960s were the leaders in marches against segregation the Vietnam War. This was a time when the word was in season. The word was not rare. But we find ourselves in a time today where God's prophetic word seems rare and where the word of God is out of season. What happened? Some of it was simply demographics, mainline Protestant married couples started having a lot fewer children. The people in our country figured out in part due to television and radio, which was a new medium for them, that they could go to the television or the radio pre preachers and listen to them. They had a choice. They could go to churches that we see booming all around us today that offer simple theology, emotional worship, and sermons that only comfort rather than challenge. And so by the millions, they left the churches, the established churches, where proper worship and social justice was important. They left it because those things didn't feel nearly as good as the other churches. As the song says, you had, we learned that we could have our own personal Jesus. Now there is no simple answer to why and what we should do about it. But a couple of the answers in our scripture lessons today lead us to at least try something. Samuel was given the priesthood when he was a small boy. He ate, slept, worshiped. He and his mother were totally dedicated to God and worship. And today we've learned to tolerate clergy who are not willing to go to a real college and seminary unless it's online. And hence, while they may be good-hearted, they do not know how to preach anything other than barbershop theology. 
It takes a committed priesthood. It takes a committed prophet. We have clergy in this country who would want to run away from teaching their people in their church about biblical scholarship, and they run away for prophetic preaching against the violent, horrible choices we've met. One such subject is the war in the Middle East. 20 years we've been in that war, and our clergy, including me, are silent. And I personally confess that I have avoided preaching about this 20-year war and about the fact that we have soldiers in 140 countries. I have avoided this topic in sinful ways. Paul wrote simply that we are to preach and teach in season and out of season. God's truth, I'm convinced right now, is out of season. We need to be at peace with knowing that we give it our best shot, even though it may be ignored and make no difference. We are in our teaching and preaching and working called to be faithful, not successful. Faithful, not successful. Let's pray together. We come with self-inflicted pains of broken trust and wrong choices, half free and half bound by interchains, by social forces swept along by powers and systems close confined, yet we do seek hope for humankind. Amen.
May the truth of God abide in you, shine forth from you this day and every day. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen.